Welcome, everybody. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Winning zone. Today, I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am ready to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Winning zone. to another
over the world, 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 over the world. So I can keep my day. Keep my day. Never fear. Keep your good day. So I can live. Keep my day. Never fear. Keep your good day. Keep my day. Never fear. Keep your good day. So I can live. So I can live. Keep my day. Keep my day. Never fear. Keep your good day. Keep my day. Never fear. Keep your good day. Keep my day. Never fear. Keep your good day. Keep my day.
Savior alone carried the cross for all my debts. He paid the cross. Salvation complete. Now forever I'm free. Calvary covers it all. Carried the cross for all my days. He paid the cost. Salvation, Salvation complete. Now forever, now forever I'm, I'm free. Calvary, Calvary covers it all. One more time, the Savior alone. The Savior.
Summit Church Online. I'm Al Jennings, pastor, and this is Pastor Carla. And uh, we got a party planned for you today. So no matter where you're from, all over the world, get ready, because I want to talk to you about a party. And Jesus, when he prayed, when he walked the earth, when he taught the disciples to pray, he said, my will be done, or Father, your will, excuse me, be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's God's will that the earth would reflect what's going on in heaven. And as people of God, we need to be demonstrating the kingdom of God on the earth. And so I want to talk about the kingdom of heaven today. We've got powerful praise and worship, don't we? Yes, it was and, amazing. Yes, hallelujah. And, and so, so was the word. So in this party, we forgot to say that you're invited. Yes. So. <laughs> the title of the message is Don't Miss the Party. Absolutely. Okay. So we're going to take you right now into the experience. Okay. Amen. Welcome to Summit Church, y'all. Proverbs, excuse me, Proverbs. Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like. I want to talk to you about uh, Don't Miss the Party. There's a party going on. It started at Calvary. The kingdom of heaven is like. Let's just stop right there. Um, when Jesus said this, he said this for a reason. The kingdom of heaven is like this. So, so this uh, story that we're about to read is what the kingdom of heaven is like. Say like. like. Okay. So... Um, he said, basically, this is the way that you need, what I'm about to show you is the way you need to see the kingdom. And I want you to know that um, you are somebody special. I mean, <clears throat> just think about it. The Bible calls us a, a, a priesthood. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A holy nation. I think it's First Peter, First or Second Peter two nine. I think it's First Peter. A holy nation. A peculiar people. Not, we're not weird. We're we're peculiar. We're, we're we're different. We're a different kind of people. We're not like the world. We're a holy nation. The Bible says, in fact, that we were delivered, giving thanks to the Father who has. Uh, made us partakers of the inheritance of the, saint, of, of the saints in the light. We're in the light. That's in Colossians 1, who delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom. I'm telling you, if you think about it, how many of you have been saved? You've been born again. You, you've received Jesus as your Savior and Lord. I'm, t I'm telling you, that's not no little thing. That's the greatest miracle that ever took place in you is what happened to you when you made Jesus the Lord of your life. You entered into, uh, you, you became a part of the, uh, the nation. They talk about Kentucky who lost, but they call them the blue nation. Well, we're kingdom nation. Amen. We're in the kingdom of heaven. See, you, you were translated delivered from something, the power of darkness, and transplanted or translated into the kingdom. That, that's, that's the moment that you made Jesus the Lord of your life. You became a part, you became a new species of being. You, you became a person that never existed before. I'm talking about who you are right now. And really don't take this lightly. In fact, the Bible says that you were strangers and foreigners in Ephesians 2.19. And you were, you were aliens, 
See, and we became citizens once we made Jesus the Lord of, of our life. The Bible says we were once aliens and now we become citizens. Think about it. We were citizens here, aliens there. <laughs> Before we got born again. When we got born again, then we become aliens here, citizens there. So you are alien. <laughs> it's one way of looking at it, isn't it? According to the Bible, you know, we're alien to this world, but we're not aliens in heaven. We were, but when we got born again, we become citizens there, aliens here. We were citizens here, aliens there, but now we're citizens there, aliens here. We're citizens of the kingdom of God. So, okay, so don't overlook this little small clause here. The kingdom of heaven is like, okay? In other words, this is how you need to see the kingdom. This story is not about, you know, how to conduct business and how to pay workers and laborers. Okay, this gets into talking about the landowner and he's got these workers and so forth. And some of them came at different times. We will read it. And he paid them. This is not about, don't get caught up in all of that. It's not about business and how to conduct your business and pay workers. It's about the kingdom. All right? The kingdom of heaven is like this. All right? Now, let me tell you something else before we, we go further. John, in announcing Jesus' ministry in Matthew chapter 3, he said, repent. Gospel, uh, or John was the forerunner of Jesus, and he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, we fixing to change the rules here. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> okay? So, I'm the forerunner. See, he was there to prepare the way for Jesus, and, and he said, okay, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, you always got to, uh, in light of the new covenant, in light of the finished work of Jesus, you always got to go and explain what repent is. Because that scares a lot of people. When you hear the word repent, Oh, yes, you need to repent. You need to give up that drinking. Eh? You need to repent and give up that smoking. And you need to repent. You've been, you've been gambling. And you, you've been up all night. And you, you, you've been on drugs. And you just need to repent. Uh, no, that's, <laughs> that's not what repent means in that context. Repent means to change your mind. In fact, the verb form of the word means to reconsider. Now, now, Jesus was talking to people who were under the rule of the law. They were under the old covenant law and John is saying things are about to change. So you need to change your mind because in order to receive the kingdom of heaven and what the kingdom of heaven is all about, you're going to need to reconsider some things. You're going to need to take a different look at things. You're going to need to change your mind. And it, listen, I'm telling you, it's no small thing. And some people cannot handle it. All right? Uh, because they're legalists. Legalists cannot handle it. You know, a legalist that is still living under the law, we've been delivered from the law, we'll get into that, but um, we, we're, we're not in the law anymore, we're under the covenant of grace, but li li uh, folks that are legalists, they're not happy unless you're unhappy. Legalists are angry and they're mad and they, they, they just love rule keeping. 
Man, the kingdom of heaven is, I mean, is, is about joy. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is, uh, scripture says, I think in Romans 14, 17, the kingdom is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. When somebody coming up to you always fussing and angry about stuff, they're under the law. And so this is going to help you. This is going to deliver you from rule keeping and the law today when we get into this story. Because, again, this story, because it's, it's easy to get caught up in some stuff in here dealing with, well, you know, how, why did he pay them workers at the end of the day? Why did he give him the same amount as he gave those people that was working all day? Why did he do all And you get mixed up. That's why we spend so much time talking about no, verse number one. This is there to show you what the kingdom is like. It ain't talking about natural stuff and business. It's talking about the kingdom. You got it? Okay. Now, he said, now, in order, in order to get this, to get a hold of this, in order to understand the kingdom and what the kingdom is like, you're going to have to change the way you think. You're going to have to reconsider some things. This is about renewing the mind. Romans 12, 2 it says, uh, one translation says, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. In fact, one form of the word, the Greek word is translated repent. One form of that word uh, is, is meta, which means big, huge, meta, big, monumental, earth shattering. So, so this, this change is huge that, that you've got to make, you've got to adjust. Because most of the church hammers on keeping the Ten Commandments and keeping the law. But we've been delivered from the law. Jesus came on Calvary and fulfilled the law that we could be married to another. And that's Jesus. So we need to change our minds in light of new information, new revelation that we receive from the Word of God. Are you willing to do that? I mean, in, in order for you to understand the kingdom, you're going to have to open your mind to new revelation from the Word of God. And some people are not willing to do that. Jesus ran into them. I mean, man, you think that these people, I mean, this is Jesus, the word. Man, if I was there in Jesus' time. Hmm? But no, Jesus had to deal with them. And it was the religious people that was putting up all the fuss. It was folk in church all the time that gave him the most problems. The Bible says the common people heard him gladly. And Jesus would tell these religious folk, he said, you've made the word of God of none effect because of your tradition. And there's some folk that think they don't have tradition, but they're full of it. Shall we get into it? Now, when he had agreed with the laborers, okay, let's back up to verse one. The kingdom of heaven, said the kingdom of heaven is like Turn to the person next to you and say, the kingdom of heaven is like this. Turn to somebody else and say, the kingdom of heaven is, a, is like this. It's like what pastor's fixing to teach on. It's like this. It's like a landowner. He went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now, uh, the time that he went out, it was 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius. Now, what is a denarius? Simply, a denarius is a day's wage for a, a day laborer. All right? It, it was enough for him to eat for one day. It was a day's wage, covers this guy for a day. He's able to eat, feed his family for a day. All right, so he agreed. Say agreed. agreed. He agreed with the laborers for a denarius, a day's pay a day. He sent them 
into his vineyard to work. Now, these folks had been uh, out of work. They were in the job market. Nobody would give them a job. And um, all of a sudden, I mean, you know, I'm sure they're excited that, they, that somebody gave them a job. And this landowner gave them a job, and they went out and worked. They didn't complain about it. They were happy because they were out of work, and they agreed. All right. Now, so, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, I will give you. So they what? They went. Again, he went out about the sixth hour, the sixth and ninth hour. So, okay, now check this out. He went out the third hour, that's nine o'clock. Okay, and then he already sent some folk out, the initial workers at six o'clock, third hour, nine o'clock, sent some more folks out. And then he did it at the sixth hour, which is 12 o'clock. And then the ninth hour, three o'clock, okay? Now, and about the 11th hour, now this is five o'clock. Got it? He went out and found others standing idle and uh, said to them, why have you been standing here idle all day? They said, well, nobody hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came who were hired about the 11th hour, they each received a denarius. All right? And then uh, next verse, but when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more. And they likewise received each of the denarius. And when they had received it, they were happy at first, they agreed to go out. But now they complained. They're complaining now. They're complaining against the landowner. Saying, these men have worked only one hour. And you made them equal to us who have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to. Say, I wish to. I wish to. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, once you get turned on to the new covenant, you will start seeing grace in everything. <laughs> oh, boy, this is so exciting. He says, I wish to give to this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I'm good? So the, the last will be first, and the first last for many are called, and but few chosen. Listen to this. He, he gave a response to what they said, to their complaining. They think they should have got more than somebody came at 5 o'clock. We've been there since 6 o'clock in the morning. How many of y'all would have been out there complaining? Wait, that ain't right. No, okay, I, I'm, I'm not, this, this is about the kingdom now, it's not, let's not even go there, right? Don't go there, pastor, it's not, it's about the kingdom. Yeah, all right. And so what he said to him, he, he gave him really three responses to what they said. Okay, he said, all right, is it, he said, didn't you agree? With me for denarius? All right? Take what's yours, go your way. So he said, didn't I agree with you for denarius? That's the first thing he said. Right. Second thing he told him, can I do with my stuff what I want to do with it? That's the second thing he said. And then he said, are you bad because I'm good? <laughs> uh, all right. Now, 
Now, the purpose here again is to show what the kingdom is like. And let me tell you, it's always been God's will for it to be on earth as it is in heaven. That's how he taught the disciples to pray. He said, pray like this. And one of the things he said in that prayer was, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, in heaven, you're not going to be any more righteous than you are right now. God is not going to do anything for you there that he hadn't done here. He's not going to love you any more in heaven than he loves you right now. The love he has for you right now is the same as the love he'll have for you when you get to heaven. You're not going to be any more righteous when you get to heaven than you are right now. There are going to be some physical things happen. I mean, our, our eyes will see better and, and you know, we'll, we'll have some physical things happening that, that, that will be perfected physically wise. But spiritually speaking, and what God has already provided for you in Christ, it's not going to be any different in heaven. Hallelujah, isn't that good? The, see, so he's talking about the kingdom of heaven is like this. See, the kingdom of heaven extends to earth. I already mentioned this, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, this is not, this story again is not to show us how to do business and how to pay workers. This is about, this this parable is all about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the nature of the king. See, every kingdom has to have a king. And, and we've got a king, and the good news is, praise God, he is the king of kings. When Revelation talks about he's the king of kings, who's the kings that he's the king of? He's the big K king of the little K kings, and, the, and that's us. You ever wonder who's the king of kings? He calls us kings. And we need to be reigning as kings in life. Isn't that good? Okay, now, let's, let's see. Uh, first, I want to talk about three people, and then we're done. Number one, we're going to talk about the landowner and who that landowner represents. The landowner, we're going to deal with the landowner, we're going to deal with the ungrateful workers, and then we're going to deal with the grateful workers. Now, God, the, or the landowner, represents God. All right? And, and, and see, God is a bookkeeper's nightmare. <laughs> you see, God, see, these ungrateful workers wanted, you know, um, them, them to be paid according to how, uh, how they thought, their, their way of rule keeping and record keeping. <laughs> well, we should have got more than them folk came out there at, 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 and worked for one hour. And see, see, God is a bookkeeper's nightmare. What he gave those people who came out at five o'clock, he didn't, he didn't pay them based on the work they did. He, ba he paid them based on who he was and the generosity of his heart. Can you, see, can you see how this landowner represents God? And let me tell you something else about God. God, what do I say first? Let me say this first. God, let me tell you something about God. He's called El Shaddai. He's, he's very, very, very big. He's very, very, very rich. And he's very, very, very generous. Let me tell you something about God. Something else. This is powerful. And... Um, if you don't understand this, you won't understand this parable. God is never unfair according to his standard of fairness. See, gr grace is not fair. Under grace, you get what you don't deserve. 
I'm going to say that again. I said, it just sounds good that, that I want to hear it myself again. God, this will help you through life. God is never unfair according to his standard of fairness. Now, according to their standard, according to these ungrateful workers' standard of fairness, he wasn't fair. That's why I said God is a, he's a bookkeeper's nightmare. <laughs> he just all day long just pours and pours and pours his life and blessing on people. And you got people that are like these ungrateful workers. I'm getting ahead of myself. But that I don't know why God blesses them. They don't even hardly come to church. And they ain't doing according to what you want them to do. You ungrateful worker. You, no, I mean, excuse me. You mean, you mean just, just the, the unfaithful workers were legalists. God has great resources. Yes. And you know what? Why does, why does he choose to bless us when we, were, when we were deep in sin? While we were sinners, he died for us. I don't know why he did it. He, I guess he, he just wanted to. He's just so generous and so rich and so he's chosen. He demonstrated his love for us. He just chose to love us. Didn't make any sense. We didn't deserve it. By grace, we've been saved. By his un grace is God's unmerited favor. We've been saved through faith. And that not of, uh, of ourselves. It is the gift of God. We just, we just freely receive uh, the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace. God is just, he's just, he's just so generous. I can't, I don't have the words to describe how generous, how big, how rich, how wonderful he is. Let's deal with these un ungrateful workers. Had these folk not come in at five o'clock and got the same as them, they would have been happy with that day's wage. They would have went home and cooked ribs and chicken and, and they would have just been, they would have just been happy. They would say, man, look, we, we have been out of the job market. Look, somebody gave us a job. And so we get to eat today, praise God. But no, they probably had indigestion, didn't sleep good. Again, they, look, listen, these other folk hadn't come along at the end of the day and got the same as them. They would have been happy. They would have enjoyed what they had. But they tripping over somebody else and what they got that was really none of their business. And they made an accusation on, on a landowner and called him unfair. God, why are you blessing them? Don't you see me? So they couldn't enjoy what was given to them. <laughs> wow. They wanted everybody to be paid by the books. Why did he tell this story? To show you what the kingdom is like. See, don't forget to see that you, you've got to understand that he's showing that he, he's saying basically, see, well, here's what happened. The landowner changed the rules on him. <laughs> the rules got changed on him. And they say, it's going to be different. There's, a new, there's a, a, a new sheriff is in town. And this is to show us the difference between the law and grace. This is to show us what the kingdom is like. We're no longer under the law. Romans 7 says, we died to the law that we could be married to another, to Jesus. The law says, an eye for an eye. A two for two. You get what you deserve. These ungrateful workers want everybody to be paid according to the books. But the landowner who represents God paid people by or according to the generosity of his heart. Under the new covenant, we don't get what we deserve. We are married to Jesus. 
We're under the new covenant of grace. We, we are married to Jesus. We're in union with Christ. We're citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Let's look at these grateful workers. Man, now you've got to understand, this, this will help you understand this. The culture that they lived in was a very hard and a mean culture. Um, people who were religious and non-religious were all under uh, oppression by, by the Romans. And in, that, in, and in this culture, you get what you deserve. Nobody was kind. Nobody was generous. You got what was coming to you, and that was it. You, 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 got, you got just enough. Nobody, nobody gave you anything. In fact, being kind to somebody was, was looked at as weakness. If you showed kindness. It was a very hard, you get the picture, it was very hard, very, um, very evil culture. On a job, you did, did just, as not, just enough. The employers would, would, wouldn't show you any kind of mercy. So you, you can see when, in, this, in this particular story, when this landowner is, is showing and demonstrating a mercy, it blew them away. I can imagine them having a party. I can imagine them telling everybody, you know what? We work one hour and we got the same as everybody else. We got blessed. Look at we get to eat. I, I, we only work an hour. I imagine they're telling everybody about it. Probably all week they're telling people, you get guess what happened? You not gonna believe what happened. So, so somebody showed us so much love and kindness. It didn't even make any sense. Now, if you think about this, what other story does this make you think about? Well, what about the prodigal? All right. You know the story. Uh, most of you know how he went out and he wanted the, the portion of his inheritance from his dad. His dad gave it to him. He went out and he wasted it. But he came to himself. He was eating with those pigs. He came to himself. So he, so he came back, had re rehearsed this uh, speech that he was going to give the father. And actually, that's a, a, a story about repentance. But the repentance came because the guy, it wasn't about what he said. In fact, the Message Bible says when he was about to give his speech, his father saw him from a great way off. What that tells me is he must have been looking for him every day. And really, it, it, it's, it's a story about the father's love. Neither one of them boys understood it. Not the older boy or the son that went wasted. They didn't, they didn't understand his father's love. He didn't, the, young, the, the son that had wasted his money Wasted the inheritance. He didn't need that speech. And the father, in, the, in fact, the message Bible says, the father wouldn't even listen. He started, the father wouldn't even let him finish. Because he's eating with those pigs. He said, man, how many of my uh, father's servants, you know, they get taken care of, man. I'm here um, starving here. Hungry. He said, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going back home. I'm going to tell my father, I said, I've sinned. See, what he's done is, he, before he said any of that stuff, he came to himself. That's when he repented. He said, what am I doing? <laughs> Let me go home. But he didn't understand the father's love because he started talking about what he was going to say. You know, I've sinned, and I'm not even worthy to be, I'm not even worthy to be called your son. Just make me one of the servants. I just want to eat. You know what I mean? I'm tired of eating with these pigs. Just, just, just get, me in a, get me up in here somewhere. All right, no. He didn't understand the father's love for him. 
Father saw him a, a great way off come running towards him. But when you change your mind about stuff, and like, okay, I'm going to do things God's way. God, whatever you have for me, I want it. So, I didn't mean to get into all of that, but let, let, me, let me tell you this. The father said, bring out the fatter cat. I mean, put, bring out the best robe. Let's, let's put a ring on his finger. Let's put, put sandals on his feet. He said, it's right that we have a party. Well, look, 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 look at this, Luke 15, 32. It, it was right, say right. right. See, it was fitting, it was proper. That we should make merry and glad for your brother was dead. Okay, let me, let me lift out something. Before this, uh, this came up because the brother was tripping. The older brother had an invite to the party and wouldn't come. Now what's he tripping about? He's just like those ungrateful workers. They had the same thing. They got paid the same and got to enjoy the same benefits. Got a day's wage, just like the uh, 11th hour folk, right? But they are upset over what somebody else has got. So he wouldn't even come to the party. This dude could eat meals, everything that was given to that younger, his, his younger brother, he could get every day. <laughs> he could have been partying every day. Oh, come on, somebody. Don't y'all be tripping about somebody else. Just come to the party. Don't, the, 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 the message today, don't miss the party. So the father said, look, dude, this is a good thing we're doing here, man. The father did that based on the generosity of his heart. He said, it's right that we should be merry and make glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. He says, it's right that we should be merry, have a party. Glory to God, man. Y'all get something out of this? Yeah. Don't, don't miss the party. Don't be like those ungrateful workers. And enjoy what God has for you. We're not under the law. We're under a new covenant of grace where God ex extends his love and his mercy he doesn't, he, he, he doesn't prosper you, heal you, bless you based on your performance, based on your works. Legalists want to hold you to the law. You know, everything, in, everything that we've done, everything that we do in society and how we're taught, it's a merit-based system that we live in. And it's a challenge to, to sometimes just to get your mind around grace and God's unmerited favor because, okay, you make these grades and, uh, and then you'll get a good job and, and you're competing against somebody else and you, you go into a job interview and you've got other people you're competing with. You get on the job, you start working well, if you, if you work hard, come in here every day, and then and you work hard, you know, you'll get promoted. I'm not saying there's anything that's wrong with that. You should do your best. But, you, when, it, but when it comes to the things of God, you're going to have to turn that off. Huh? And when you come to God in prayer and you've got a job opportunity or you have a business opportunity, don't start saying to yourself, well, other people are more qualified. And uh, 
I don't know, I don't have enough seniority. Walk in the grace that God has for you. You got unmerited favor, favor you didn't work for. And God will promote you and you, you, you'll rise above people and there'll be people who have their mouth stuck out like those ungrateful workers in the story. Like, well, what a, wait a minute, they just got here. Some of y'all had that testimony right now. You got promoted ahead of folk and they can't understand it. I love when God does stuff for me that I can't explain. I just love it. I don't deserve the favor I get. That's why I'm just happy. Cause I'm happy. <laughs> because of his grace, man. Huh? Hallelujah. I can say some other things, but I won't stop. Hallelujah. Just, just, just receive. Don't, don't, don't trip about anybody else. Amen. Just stay with grace. Just stay. Just don't have rocks in your jaws about nothing, about nobody. Hallelujah. Walk in love. And really, this, this is all about, this story, it's all about joy, man. Let's, let's have a party, man. The, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy. Woo! Just, just, just be joyful. Huh? We're not under the law. Jesus took those handwritings, the handwriting of ordinances that says it was against us and it was contrary to us and he nailed it to the cross. It, John 19.30, it is finished. The law was not given to make us righteous. It was to show us our inability to keep it. The, it, it, it showed us, it, it brought us to the end of ourselves. Because God gave them the law and the old covenant and God wouldn't lift one finger to help them. God never offered to help them one iota under the law. He wanted to show them, you can't do this. He gave them a law and didn't lift one finger to hell. But under grace, he did it all. See, grace versus law is either all or nothing. 99% law, excuse me, 99% grace plus 1% law equals law. It's all or nothing. You come up under grace, you either in the grace or you're under the law. There's no in between. And I recommend you stop attending churches with these pastors who, 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 are, who are, are, are spiritual bartenders that are serving up a mixture of law and grace. I was one of them. But I came on over. <laughs> I'm just serving grace. Hallelujah. All right, welcome back. The experience is not quite over. We want to give you an opportunity to give, and your giving helps us do what God has called us to do. And you can give securely by clicking the Give button in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. All right? And just follow the prompts. And uh, we appreciate all of your gifts of love. We appreciate your prayers. Pray for us and tell your friends about Summit Church Online. And we hope that you will tune in again next week.